What is going on guys and welcome to Built. Today we are going to be plumbing our rear mounted radiator. We installed this thing in the last video and it came out really cool. I think it looks awesome but it doesn't work yet. We've got to get a swirl pot in there. That's going to be our fill point as well. Um, so what that means is swirl pot, we've got to put some sort of vent in here to vent out to the swirl pot. We've got to vent the top of the engine as well uh, and then do a drain down to the bottom of the radiator or to the uh, coolant hose, the lower radiator hose I mean. And uh, that will be done and then we can fill it up, get a belt on there and run the engine until it's up to temperature. We have run this engine already but not until it got warm because we didn't have any way to cool it. This is the last system in this car that we needed to be able to run it. Well we need a drive shaft but that'll be made by someone else. So this is the last system that I have to make to run this car. Once we get this functioning, uh, we've got a slave cylinder to put on to be able to run our T5 with a uh, hydraulic slave. And, um, and then we're just ready to go. So that's pretty exciting. I'm ready to have this done. And uh, this is gonna be a bunch of work. So let's just go ahead and start. <laughs> oh man, that's that's cool. That's funny and cool. Alright. Well I need you to not drill because I'm about to film. No drilling. Quiet on set. You get it? Yep. My thumbs kind of hurt. How? I think I was drilling and I was holding this glue. Oh yeah, that, that does hurt your thumb a little bit. All right, so we put this on. It's called Swirl Pot. Say Swirl Pot. Swirl Pot. It's fun to say. Swirl Pot. Swirl. <laughs> And uh, I went ahead and drilled and tapped a hole into my radiator. Hang on, there's a car coming. And uh, we put a, uh, a hose nipple into that. Now the reason I did that, I'm not sure if this is necessary, but it made sense to me. The whole point of this swirl pot. I don't really like this. You want me to let you down? What okay. is really cool is that one's gonna need like one more bottom. Yeah. And Waste You're right. It would be really cool. Yeah, that would be really cool. Yeah. Yeah, Daddy's got to make some new stands for that one, and then that one will we'll get that one set up for this car too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. So. The whole point of the swirl pot is to bleed air off, and I think that you've got to pull air from the top of the radiator and the top of the engine. Normally, you would go to the radiator cap, but our radiator doesn't have a cap, and we don't actually have a fill point either, so we have no high point on the cooling system. So I decided to put this in there just to vent off air. This, this neck, this 
kind of upper radiator hose neck thing is our highest point. So now we have a vent there Can for air to escape. Sure. Uh, so that's connected now. We've got to do this other connection, which goes to the engine, which I'll show you in just a minute. And then we've got the drain on the bottom that's going to allow any coolant that gets separated from the air uh, is going to go down through the drain and back into our cooling system. Any air that comes out comes out of the top right here. So it seems complicated, but it's really not. You're just trying to bleed all your air off the top of the engine and the top of the ra radiator where they're going to collect. You got to turn that down so you don't get copyright infringement. All right, so this is now our radiator cap. I think this is going to be our fill point as well. It might take a long time to fill, but I think that's what's going to be the deal. Um, and then we've got to get, hey, ah, you can't play that. So this is like a normal radiator cap, like what you normally have on top of your radiator. Uh, under a certain pressure, it opens and lets uh, air escape, which is pretty cool. So we will run a coolant reservoir, which I've ordered. I think I'm going to sit it right here next to this. I've got kind of an open space here uh, where the spoiler cutout is. So we'll probably just stick the reservoir here too, run that to the reservoir, uh, and that'll just catch everything that's extra basically, bleed off the air. Yeah, so I think I've got this system completely figured out. We're gonna go ahead and get it all filled and everything and run it with this just open. We might run a hose off to the ground or something. But ideally, this shouldn't be bleeding off a bunch of fluid. It might get a little bit of liquid out, but mostly it should just be air, as far as I understand. All your liquid should go out the bottom and back into the bottom of the radiator. Now, the cool thing about this radiator is there's already a port on the bottom. I don't know what it's for, but we're going to use it for the drain for this. So I've got some hose. Heads up, buddy. The clearance is so tight there. Wait. Here it is. Oh. I've got some hose here, and that is going to connect this to there and it's gonna be the connection from this port all the way to the top of the engine. So let's go to the front of the engine, we'll plug this up, run it all the way through. We're just gonna follow our other pipes uh, and plug it in here, then we'll plug that one in there, and then we'll be ready to put coolant in the system. Now on a lot of the engines that I've seen, people are connecting to the head as their coolant port to let air out. In this engine, coolant flows over the top of the intake manifold, which makes me think that that's the highest point in the car. And so I put in a plug right here at the top, Put that in right there, and then this, I'm just gonna follow the rest of my coolant lines. That's not your hammer. That's, that's one that Daddy made. Your hammer's at the house. But you can use that one. It's cool. I'm going to try to explain what I've got going on here, but you should know that I just learned what this thing was like a week ago, and it may not be right. We'll find out in this video. Um, we've got our vent off the top of the radiator. Swirls around and goes here. This is kind of a high point, so I don't know if that's going to be an issue or not. But uh, we'll see, we'll, we'll know, we'll be able to see it literally, so that should help. Um, and then we've got this one, which is our vent off of the engine. It runs all the way up to the front and into the top of the intake manifold. And then we've got this one, which is our drain. You can see it goes down to the bottom of the radiator there. We had a little area that we could drain into. I guess that's gonna work. Normally you would go into the loader. Okay, normally you would go into the lower radiator hose, but that was already there, so I figured it would work. Everything's clamped. I've gone back and double checked every single clamp in the system and it is all good. So it is time to put coolant in the system. We're going to try to fill it just like it is. I don't know if it's going to work this way. I ordered one of those coolant fill like jugs that you can just pour a bunch of coolant in and it'll just cool it. It'll just uh, fill itself over time. Um, so we may end up doing that. We're going to try pouring coolant in here and just see what happens. See how long it takes for it to actually drain out. Coolant's that stuff I was telling you about earlier. You want to help me put it in? Always ready for my...
all the water up. Fingers get <laughs> no, your fingers get bigger. There's there's still only five fingers. You got five fingers and I got five fingers. Well, I do hear leaks. What? You hear leaks? Yeah. You're gonna have to find them now. Whoa. You hear that? Right, you ready? So while okay, I was here I go. while I was working, he was working on this. All right, uh, let's see. Can we see it down here? No. Okay. Oh, no. This is gonna be bad. Okay, can you get it? You might just have to poke it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you are waiting for that. Oh, that was awesome. <laughs> All right. Way. Let's go, let's go get parts. Oh, hey, it's mommy. So I lost little Manny, I had to go to sleep, but I did find my leak and I went ahead and got the stuff I needed to fix it. And it is right uh, here. You might notice uh, I have two ports from, I actually got three ports for heater core and none of them have hoses on them. So that's what was leaking. Uh, I did have some bolts missing from my water pump, so I'm glad that those leaked because we were able to seal up the water pump as well, like a, something, a bolt right there and then one underneath here. Um, so that's good. We'll, we're, our water pump is all the way installed now, which is good, but the leak was definitely coming from our port right there. So I've got some hose that I just picked up, and I'm going to loop it, basically. I'm going to loop these two, and I'm going to block this one off. we got some weird stuff going on with this car because it's a hodgepodge of a bunch of different parts from a bunch of different 302s. Um, so we'll loop the ones, the water pump one, and then we'll cap that one, and I think we'll be good to go. We'll start refilling this thing again. All right, so now we are looped. Not the prettiest thing in the world. This is what I'm talking about, uh, but it is done. And then we capped off this one that we don't need anymore. <clears throat> what we will do, so we have heat, is run our heater up to, we've still got this like MG factory heater core kind of situation right here. There's a port there to port there. So we'll just run those up, but for now, I just want to make sure well, I want to limit the amount of things that could fail. I don't know if that thing works. I don't know anything about it. So for now, we're going to loop this, just not worry about it. And we'll run the stuff that we put in the car. And then later, we are going to need heat for defrost and stuff like that. We'll run into that. We may have to replace it. I don't know. We'll see. But now it's time to fill again. I think we're going to need a lot more. All right, so uh, we can't really get it to fill up because the thermostat's closed, and we want to run it and get the water pump to try to circulate some of this coolant, and we'll just fill it up with a hose on the back as it pulls coolant into the system. I think it's going to work. Um, we do think we have a leak up front, but it's kind of hard to tell, and I just want to hear the engine run again. So we're going to run it. Um, we'll see what happens. If we get anything major, try to find every single leak we can find, um, and then we'll cut it off and address them. Hopefully, there won't be any, but we know how that goes. Let's run.
crazy, man. All right, that is it. The coolant system is done. We've got our fans on. We haven't run them yet, but that's because I'm gonna do that with the wiring harness. So we'll plug those in. Uh, we'll probably run them off a temperature switch instead of just like a, I thought about just having a fan switch in the car, like race car style, but I think I'll do a temperature switch. It's easy enough. Um, none of my pipes leaked. I'm as surprised as you. None of them leaked. None of the joints leaked, anything. Uh, so that was awesome. Everything worked the way it was supposed to. All the way up to the front, you can see, just absolutely dry. We ran it uh, and got some water flowing through it. Everything just worked. Now where we did have an issue is our thermostat housing is leaking out the bottom. I tried some RTV and that didn't work. I guess I didn't use enough. Uh, but I got online and read and it turns out there's a lot of issues with these not mating up really well and you have to just basically glue them on. So we'll do that. We'll let the coolant kind of chill out drain some out and re redo that and then we had a leak from this little plug right here but i think some teflon tape will shore that up and that's it that's all of our leaks water pumps working you can see we got this uh we got this belt and our tensioner work for the alternator and everything everything is running like it's supposed to which is really awesome uh, one of the biggest issues people have with swapping a 302 is the pulleys lining up and ours do so that was a hundred percent luck you can see we haven't wired this up yet, so I think the next big kind of mechanical thing to do is gonna be wiring everything together, which shouldn't be hard. We've got one wire for this, three wires for that, one wire for a fuel pump, and then our fans and stuff like that. So we will get that done, not that big of a deal. But I'm gonna shift gears. I told you guys that I had a really crazy deadline, and the deadline is the end of this week. So what I'm gonna do is I've got a little bit of fiberglass fab to do. We're going to, I'll just show you guys later, but we're gonna do some, some more fab work. Nothing major, we're just gonna clean everything up. I want this car to be really, really nice. Um, and so we're gonna clean up some of the lines, we're gonna clean up some of the work. Um, one of the things I haven't really talked about on the video is this side of the car. This fender is actually not wide enough. See that? So we've gotta come out about an inch, um, but it is wide enough down here. So I think what's gonna happen is we'll just section this, pull it out and do that. I'll do a video on that, but here is the real kicker. I am not painting this car. This is a first for built, and I think it's gonna be a good thing for us as a community and as a channel, because I'm gonna get to send this car off to get painted, and while it's being painted, we'll get to work on the Fatson, we'll get to work on a new project that's coming up. Very, exciting to sh very excited to show you guys. Some of you guys already know about it. The cars are really loud here. Um, but we're gonna get to work on some other stuff, and it's just gonna free me up to get projects finished. That's something I've really been struggling with this year, as you guys know. Uh, so I'm working on it, I'm trying to get it sorted, and I think we've got a good plan. So, at the end of this week, today is Tuesday, at the end of this week, this car will be done by me. It'll be, all my stuff will be done. It'll go to body work, it'll get body worked out and painted by a buddy of mine named Cam, and uh, I'm giving him four weeks to do it, and so in that time for the channel, we're going to go to uh, other things. I'm going to order a drive shaft for this. Um, we're going to work on the fats and other things, but basically what's going to happen is I'll get all the parts I need to be able to drive this thing so that when it gets back from paint, we can assemble it, we can drive it down the road, uh, and it'll, it'll be done. You know, it'll go down the road, it'll drive, we'll be able to video and all that cool stuff. The interior is getting done by another friend of mine, so we're going to get that kind of quoted and figure out when we're gonna do all that. We're gonna go through full interior on this thing for the first time ever. Uh, but I'm not good at interiors and I've been, I'm accepting that. So we're gonna get somebody to do that as well. Uh, but this car is getting done and I'm really excited about that. So all of that to say, I've got a lot of work to do this week. I will video it. I don't know when you guys are gonna see it because I may include it in the paint video. We'll see how it goes. But we got a lot to do. The cooling system was a huge, huge task and I'm so glad that's out of the way and that it functions. At least it seems to function <laughs> right now. We'll know more later, but it doesn't leak, which is huge. Um, we've got four gallons of coolant in this thing. It may need a little bit more once all the air kind of bleeds off. I don't know, we'll have to see. But this is it. You'll notice I didn't put an overflow res reservoir. I did order one, so it'll go kind of right here in the same vicinity as the, uh, as the uh, swirl pot. We'll put an overflow over here, and it'll all be a sealed system, and it'll bleed itself, and that will just work. All right, I think that's everything. I hope you guys enjoyed this part of the build. This was a big surprise. I have planned on this since the first, since I ordered the spoiler. I just didn't know how we were gonna be able to make it happen, and we made it happen, and I think it looks awesome. Another thing that it does for us with the MG is we don't have a lot of radiator space. So you can see we've got like almost none right here, and the hood is super low, so we're able to run a full-size radiator 
uh, with this 302 swap. 302 swap sounds sick. It shoots mad flames. Uh, we'll have to figure that out. It's super rich right now. But, I mean, it works. It fired right up again, which is just awesome. Just awesome. All right. That's all the talk I'm going to do for now. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you're stoked about the rear mount radiator and the spoiler and everything else that's going on back here. Uh, I'm going to flip to the front of the car tomorrow. And uh, if you want to see that, come to Instagram and I'll post some stuff on there. We're going to shore up the bumper. We're going to shore up the front fenders. We're going to go through all of the body work and make sure everything's flat enough for Cam. And then Cam's going to take it and paint it. And I cannot wait to show you guys. The color. We'll see you in the next one. That's all. Thank you.